So, quite some time ago, when I was first starting to write a little bit on the internet, um, I really explained in depth uh, some of the injuries that I had, some of the setbacks that I'd had. And when I was writing these articles, it was long before I'd ever decided to do anything like a blog. In fact, it was back in the day when I used to have a website called gashead.org. And gashead.org, you know, was just a, a fun thing that I did to pass the time when I was doing athletics full time. And, you know, it, it, it was okay. I mean, it, basically it was a blog before the term had been used, you know. Um, for me, it was just a chance to expel energy from inside myself. And, you know, when I was corresponding a lot with these emails, the question would come up, how did you overcome your injuries? How did you get back to the level that you got to? And then they would lead to other things like, how did you get from point A to point B as an athlete? And the thing that, you know, I talk a lot about in small company is the fact that I'm a big believer in the idea that we're a part of a greater existence, okay? I don't deny that fact. I'm, I'm a believer that to have extreme success in different venues, and even if that extreme success or that high level of achievement may be less than someone else's, like for example, you know, the vision that I had for myself and the dreams that I had when I was an athlete were always to be an Olympian. And considering where I started and considering what happened along the way, I'm pretty happy with the success that I ended up having. Did I make it to the Olympics? Unfortunately, I did not. Um, but that's okay. I mean, those are some of the things that happen along the way. When we look at overcoming and achieving and producing success as an individual, the big thing that I always tell people is that what used to set me apart considering where I started, and for those that don't realize where I started, you know, I grew up in a town uh, the size of an ink drop in the ocean. The town was a small logging town in British Columbia where there was probably 200 people, no sports, no athletics. We had to do that at a neighboring, you know, slightly larger town. And there was no track and field there as well. You know, I, I played different sports growing up. But somehow I fell into track, had a little bit of success, and that got me to the United States where I blossomed. When I look at success and I look at where I started, what I always tell people, and there were things that came to me very naturally that I now see sold around the world, you know, Kindle, paperback, internet, etc., is this idea that your mind is able to perceive and promote and establish pathways in which your body will eventually follow. And some people like to think that that's hokey bullshit, and that's fine. That's okay for them. Um, the reality is, is they may just use another means to achieve their goals and have success. But at the end of the day, I think it's just a different language for describing the same things. And the way that I always look at it, and the way that I've always looked at even coaching and overcoming some of these things, is you have to operate, and I know I did from a very young age, at a very high level of consciousness right before you step over that boundary into what I would almost call fantasy or dream state existence. And when I say dream state existence or fantasy existence, it's, it's classic. It's, it's when you look at a little kid that's outside with a Batman cape on and he sees himself as this great you know, crime fighter in the backyard attacking invisible nothing. But that invisible nothing is setting the map work if it's promoted to a strong sense of self, sense of self-confidence, and a strong sense of good in that person. I think what happens to some of these people is when they see their children acting out in that fantasy-like manner, that they stunt it very quickly, and the kids start to believe that it's not okay to dream and fantasize about being something much greater than their backyard. And for me, that never happened, because I was really, really fortunate to have the parents that I've had, and a father that is very open and brought into my life at a very young age things like existentialism and the idea of greater energies than exist within yourself. 
Now, a lot of people don't really get into that, and that's fine. Like I said, this is all my opinion, so it, it's really what I believe. If you dig it, you dig it. But when I was very, very young, what I started to do, which helped me progress beyond the boundaries of a town of 200 people in the middle of nowhere as an unrecruited, unknown, unassociated to the bigger picture of athletics kid, is that when I trained, I trained really, really hard in the physical world that I lived in. Okay, And I tell people that all the time, a dream or a belief or a fantasy or an idea has no backbone if you don't incorporate it through the actions of a physical existing world, meaning which you still have to get out there and be a human being to achieve those goals. You can't just sit on the couch and fantasize about it. Okay, and when you combine the two things that's where a lot of these self-help books and these makeshift gurus miss the mark is that they fill us with the desire and gusto and belief to achieve these things on a psychological level but they don't often instill the practical reality that you still have to put one foot in front of the other and go out and achieve things and so for me as an athlete I trained for hours and hours and hours as a teenager often doing it wrong but it didn't matter but I saw myself in my mind doing great things, the sound of the crowd, the feeling of sensation, the idea that I was competing for championships. You know, out there throwing the discus, you know, 38 meters, but in my mind, I wasn't just training out in my backyard by myself in the mountains. When I was throwing 38 meters, that was a gold medal throw. That was a championship performance. I could feel the crowd. I could feel the adulation. I could sense the admiration of women. Shit, I was a teenager. Of course I thought these things. And I built it up and I created these images in my mind that I continued to use throughout my entire athletic career. And I even used them into college. When I was training, it was very much inside myself. And when you see some of these videos on YouTube of me lifting, it's the same thing. Everyone thinks that it's a lot of rage and anger and, and I'm a salty bastard when it comes to a lot of things. But the reality is, is I'm not. I use different tools. I... I use different stimulus, I use different visions in my mind, I use different beliefs to achieve my goal. And when I'm doing that, I have a tremendous amount of power that comes from inside myself. And does it always bat 100%? Unfortunately, it doesn't. But considering that I started in a town of 200 people that didn't even know what track and field was, and if it wasn't for my father building a discus ring out of wood in my backyard, I would have never had the opportunity for success to make it not only to a number one ranking indoors in the world, but to a Canadian national record and Canadian national teams. Even those were great leaps considering where I started. Did I know I had the physical capability of doing it? No. But that presented itself. But in my mind, I always perceived and I always worked towards driving in a direction. And then I just got up every day and relentlessly pursued it. And that same idea holds true for almost everything in life. It doesn't matter if it's business or education. If you can take that highest level of consciousness and in a waking state start to overlap it with streams of belief into the super extraordinary or the fantasy or the dreamlike state, you will start to manifest that in your life as long as you continue to get up every morning and walk forward with a desire and a passion. Okay, and we hear passion all the time, I mean, with the book, but you have to be driven with that. Like I always tell people, I don't care what it is in life, and I've said this for years, even since before the book came out, which thankfully it did because it reconfirms me and doesn't make me feel crazy, is that you have to get up in the morning driven with a passion and a belief to achieve something. And if you get up with a passion and a belief to achieve something, I don't care if it's music, art, your kids, baking, I don't care what it is, you will find that a lot of things in your life will move in that same direction. Will you have setbacks? Trust me, you will have massive setbacks in life. It's a part of the deal. Why? I don't know. It's just, it is what it is. But how you deal with and project yourself into those situations will have a great impact on how they influence the future and how little of an impact they'll have on your past. For example, when I had my catastrophic injuries, 
I never really stopped to think about them is destructive. When I was at home alone in my room in college, would I be overwhelmed with emotion sometimes? Absolutely. My world was coming to an end as I knew it. But when I was stepped up in the morning and when I left my, my dormitory, I was always moving forward. It was always something I was going to overcome. I started to see myself as the guy that overcame great injuries. I seen it long before it happened. I used to tell stories to myself in my mind of what it would be like to be the guy looking back on his injuries and being like, I overcame that. And I saw myself as the person that overcame those injuries, for example. I saw myself as the person telling other people that you can do it because I did it long before I ever did it. I had no idea if I could ever do it, but I did it because I truly believed it and I foresaw it in my mind. So in closing, I just want people to start thinking about those things because it's something that, you know, this 11 minutes isn't even going to touch for me. I could talk about this for hours, but how you start to program your mind, you have to understand that great success comes from the ability to take your mind slightly higher than the level of conscious thought the level of I need to buy bread and milk today thought and start seeing yourself slightly above the gray into the existence where you see the colors of opportunity and the colors of success and you start to see yourself as something greater than you are and you may perceive yourself as something that you may achieve in a different manner but as long as you start to progress in your mind the idea and the belief system and the slight fantasy of achievement and great goal setting and great opportunity and then you get up every morning and you walk towards that you will be amazed at the level of success you have in life I truly believe that and I think the only time that we get deterred from that is when other people start to influence us and tell us that it's unacceptable and I think that you have to always stay true to yourself and stay true to that fantasy that you had because at the end of the day Every kid that grew up wearing a Batman cape made out of a pillowcase and nobody told them that was a bad thing, they seem to have that ability. They seem to carry that with them in their life, the idea of invincibility. And you have to have that. Will you have setbacks? Yes. But you have to make that as a part of the greater achievement. And you have to be able to overcome those things mentally before you ever overcome them physically. All right. Later.